Hello everybody, I'm Pastor Steve, and today we're going to be reading from the uh, book of Mark, and we're in chapter 1, and I'd like to share verses 4 through 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to, to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love, with you, I am well pleased. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, may the words from my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered here together, may they not only be acceptable, but may they be pleasing to you, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Our sermon title today is Soldiers and Servants. Now here's a story about the, the 41st president, George H.W. Bush. It seems the senior President Bush was touring a nursing home. As he walked down the hall with his entourage of aides and reporters, he came upon one old man who was slowly making his way in, in the opposite direction. The president reached out, took the patient's hand, and, and asked gently, Sir, do you know who I am? The man stared back blankly for a, for a minute or two, then his eyes focused. Slowly he shook his head from side to side. No, he admitted, I don't know who you are, but... But if you'll just ask the nurses, they can tell you. When the voice from heaven spoke to... <coughs> excuse me. When the voice from heaven spoke, no one had to guess who Jesus might be. The Holy One of Heaven said, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. That statement demands a, a personal reflection for followers of Jesus Christ. If the life of Jesus was lived in a way that pleased the Heavenly Father, it, it ought to be our goal in life to, to live as he did. And so we, we ask the question, what kind of life pleases God? There are many words with which we could frame an answer to that question. In the body of Christ, we have a, a kind of shorthand that covers it. We could say that following Jesus in a in a way that's pleasing to God, is, is living out our baptism. It's like the old saying, if, if you're going to talk the talk, well, you'd better walk the walk. These shorthand statements are another way of saying that, that our life in Christ demands faithfulness. It's the kind of faithfulness that's 24-7, 52 weeks a year. That kind of faithfulness to the promises of our baptism. The baptismal covenant of our church contains those promises that you and I made at our confirmation or adult baptisms. These are, are some of the identifying marks of a baptism lived out. These are what separate the way God's people live from those who live the unexamined life. Today, let's examine these just a little bit deeper. 
They can be separated into two pictures, the servant of Christ and the soldier of the cross. Let's start with the servant of Christ. Paul used this term to describe himself when he wrote to the church of Galatia and, and also the Christians at Colossae. All believers are servants of Christ. You can tell the servant by the distinguishing marks of service, that is, being a humble servant. Jesus exhibited the life of a humble servant. Living out our baptism as a servant calls for humility, just as the Master was humble. There is no task, great or small, that we should not be willing to attempt in His name. Obedience is certainly a characteristic of humility, but in Mark's gospel, there, there's a special significance. In verse 10, it says that as Jesus came up from the water of his baptism, the heavens were torn apart. The word means a violent rip. The only other time Mark used the, the word was the crucifixion scene where the, the temple veil is torn from top to bottom at Christ's death. It's entirely possible that, that here Jesus sees the end of his mission, the cross. It's not, a, it's not as pretty a sight for Jesus as we imagine this inspiring scene to be. He knows what's ahead. The Father says words in heaven that have been spoken before in the Son's presence. Isaiah Chapter 42, verse 1 says, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Above everyone in attendance that day, Jesus knew justice could only come with the shedding of blood, his blood for man's sin. Only by obedience and sacrifice would Jesus continue to delight the Father. It's that way for us, too. Baptism is a matter of obedience, but if it ends at the baptismal font with no ongoing obedience, where's the servanthood? The servant of Christ living out his baptism is humble and obedient to his master. A second identifying mark of, of Christian baptism being lived out as the soldier of the cross. In Disney's The Lion King, Timon and Pumbaa stumble across the, a young Simba, the lion, who has a guilty conscience. They teach him their life's problem-free philosophy, Akuna Matata. For Timon, it meant, according to fantasy land language, no responsibility, no work, no worry. It's safe to say that if you want a lifetime of bliss and easy living, you better plan on living in Disney's cartoon studio. Because in the real world, it just ain't so. Baptism is not the beginning of irresponsibility. It is an enlistment into the army of the Lord. Why an army? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, one, because there's temptation ahead. When Jesus came out of the baptismal waters, the Spirit led him right into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days. There's not much room for Hakuna Matata when you're doing hand-to-hand -hand combat with Satan. God instructs us in Scripture to, to run from temptation the minute you see it. The reason is that the Lord knows we're not very good at resisting it. I'm reminded of the somewhat frugal preacher who reluctantly agreed to let his wife take the credit card and go shopping. He warned her over and over to resist temptation to buy things they couldn't afford. Well, she promised and, and left for town. Well, she came back with a red dress by Balenciaga and a charge slip for $2,400. The husband hit the roof. He yelled, I told you to resist the temptation. You should have turned and run from that old devil. Well, she replied, dear, I did just as you said. I heard Lucifer whispering in my ear, how good that Balenciaga looked on me. And I turned and I ran. But you still fought it, whined the preacher. 
I couldn't help myself. When I turned to run, well, the devil said, oh, it looks good from this side too, darling. The reason we are soldiers of the cross is that temptation is a spiritual battle. And also, too, because there's opposition and loneliness ahead. All you have to do is read a few verses past our text, and, and you find that Jesus is not only tempted in the wilderness, his cousin, John the Baptist, is arrested and thrown into prison. Eventually, he's beheaded for preaching his message of repentance, the very same message Jesus would later preach. Opposition and isolation are the, the twins you will know well if you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. People join churches every year and eventually drop out complaining that Christianity doesn't work or, or it isn't worth the effort. Soldiers understand opposition. They were taught to fight because their main purpose is conflict. Many people join the church because they're under the impression it's a, a safe haven from trouble. And then they find out they're, they're supposed to be a soldier in the middle of it all. Well, they end up going AWOL. Friends, spiritual warfare is not for the faint-hearted. Diedrich Bonhoeffer said, When Christ calls a man, he bids him to come and, and die. Opposition and loneliness are genuinely part of the Christian life because that is what Christ experienced. Jesus said to his disciples, Remember the word that I said to you. Servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. We're soldiers because of temptation, opposition, and loneliness. And, and this is the good news today, three, because there's a crown ahead. The word's ringing in everyone's ears that day. As they watch Jesus emerge from the water, were, with you, I am well pleased. It's the same phrase in the teaching of Jesus' parable when he told about the coming kingdom. Well done, good and faithful servant. Jesus encouraged us all in the words of John when he told the, the persecuted church at Smyrna to be faithful right up until death and there would be a crown of life waiting. You know, I was asked a question by a teacher way back in grade school, a long time ago, by the way, but the question was, what are you going to do with your life? Now, like any other young boy, I began to respond in terms of a job or, or career. You see, most of us men identify ourselves by, by what we do in, instead of who we're called to be. Well, she stopped me dead in my tracks. No, not how you'll be earning a living. What are you going to do with your life? That question haunted me until I made a decision about servant and soldier. The right decision, according to Scripture, is to serve God. But it's much more than just being baptized. It's much more than a ceremony. It's like a marriage. People get married at a point in time. The pastor says, will you? And the couple says, yep. And, and that's it, right? Well, of course not. That was just the marriage ceremony. The marriage then begins to unfold day to day, week to week, month to month, uh, into decades, hopefully. Marriage is much more than a ceremony on on one given day. Marriage is a journey of faithful living, giving, and loving. There's thoughtfulness and struggle, anger and joy. If it's a biblical marriage, there's servanthood and soldiering. There are times of plenty and, and times of scarcity. I don't think of it in terms of I got married. 
the fact of the matter is, I am Mary. I'm living out this covenant called marriage. And marriage is the metaphor Jesus chose to identify the relationship we have as baptized believers. We, the church, are the bride of Christ. And it isn't so much that we were baptized, it's more that we are baptized. So, like the question my teacher asked, what are you going to do with your baptism? Have you messed it up along the way? If so, that's not a problem. You can re-enlist re as a soldier, come home as a servant. That's exactly what altar rails were made for. Amen. Well, that's our scripture and our message for today. I, I hope everyone's well. Uh, I look forward to crossing paths soon, hopefully. But uh, until then, stay connected with each other. That is so, so important. But more important than that, stay connected with God. Bye for now, and uh, I'll see you soon.